All right guys, Tyler down here at Emerald City Guitars, and today we have a really, really special guitar. This is a 1954 Stratocaster, specifically one made in August of 1954. Now sometimes you'll hear these called pre-production strats, and there's been a little bit of confusion as to what exactly that means, so I thought today we'd come back into the shop, we'd go through this particular guitar, uh, what pre-production strats really are, and a little bit of general history of the Stratocaster as well. So we know that the Strat was Fender's kind of second crack, at a solid body electric guitar, but the truth is that it was never really meant to be its own separate model uh, to coexist with the Telecaster. Uh, the entire idea of the Strat was that it would be an evolution of the Telecaster and eventually replace it, which of course didn't happen. So these initial improvements to the Telecaster design probably started earlier than you think. Uh, we know that as early as early 1950, Leo was already working on a design for the Tremolo Bridge. But it wasn't actually until 1951 when Leo sat down in earnest and intentionally started developing this improved new model. So over the course of the next couple years, uh, all these features that we know today, like the body contours and the six individual saddles and the, uh, the of course, the new pickup design, as well as all the electronics being mounted on the pickguard, uh, were all slowly implemented into this new model. Actually, one of the last big improvements on this new model uh, was the body shape. Actually, as late as early 1953, the body shape of this new design was identical to the Telecaster. But in the spring of that year, a new Fender employee at the time, Freddy Tavares, actually had the idea to sketch up this new body design. And the idea was to blend Fender's two previous solid body designs, the P-Bass and the Telecaster. And the result was the Strat shape that we all know and love. So all that was left at this point was to name the model, which of course Don Randall did. Uh, he was also very insistent that this new model should have a sunburst finish, which at the time was a finish associated with higher end models, mostly Gibsons. So the Strat was finally introduced in the spring of 1954, actually in the April issue of International Musician Magazine. It was at this point that Fender started building this first small run of pre-production models. So guitars from this very early first batch actually had the serial number stamped on the Tremolo cover plate, uh, this was only for about the first 100 strats ever made, at which point they were moved to the neck plate where they stayed for quite some time. So a few more of these small pre-production runs were made in the following months, uh, all of which were very, very handmade and much less standardized uh, than the ones we'd see in later 54. So Fender's vice president at the time, Forrest White, uh, was extremely insistent that any strat made prior to October 13th of 1954 was one of these pre-production models. He also sometimes called them artist models. So these were guitars that were sold directly from the factory to the musicians. Now, many of these were also salesman samples, so they would travel around the country uh, for demonstrations and things like that, uh, after which some of them were sold. So as I said, this particular guitar was built in August of 1954, which puts it well within that pre-production stage. Now the initial price for this Strat would have been $249.50 for the vibrato version uh, and $229.50 for the hardtail version. Now that's the equivalent today of about $2,800 for the fully equipped Strat, which you know, wasn't cheap by any means, but also pretty reasonable for a professional grade instrument. So by this point in 1954, Fender had certainly destigmatized the idea of a solid body electric guitar to some point, uh, you know, obviously with the, the moderate success of the Broadcaster and the Telecaster, but the Strat by no means was an instant success. There still were many musicians at the time that thought Fender guitars were nothing more than a gimmick and sales still were pretty low. But as the 1950s progressed and the advent of rock and roll kind of brought the electric guitar to the fore, uh, the Strat started getting a couple more looks, but it was really on December 1st, 1957, uh, when the model turned a corner. And that was when Buddy Holly went on the Ed Sullivan Show and played his beautiful 1954 Strat in front of hundreds of people. As a result of that, uh, in the next few years, as the 50s kind of drew a close, uh, you, you start seeing the Strat become more and more common with these big stars. Guys like Ike Turner, uh, Carl Perkins played a Strat, Richie Valens, uh, guys like Hank Marvin, even all of Gene Vincent's band, they all played Strats. So as the 50s waned and this first generation of Strats kind of drew to a close with the advent of the Rosewood fretboard, at that point, it had really cemented itself as a staple, both in the Fender catalog, uh, but also just in the lexicon of you know, American electric guitars. So this particular Strat is an excellent example. It weighs in almost exactly seven pounds, which if you know anything about 54s, is extremely, extremely uncommon to find a guitar that light. Um, it has a Tadio sign neck, glorious sign body, again of August 1954. Um, if you look at the headstock shape and the contours, you can just see that it's absolutely done by hand. Um, totally distinct from the production runs that would come just a couple months later, just completely unique. 
It's exactly what you want to see in a 1954 Stratton. So just last week we had our friend and excellent player Aaron Hebert come in and do a little demo on this. So if you want to hear this thing, you can go check that out. Uh, but for now, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.